Hi, I'm James Randi and this is Massimo Polidoro. Hello. From the fine country of Italy. He's come over here to visit us and he's uh, been a great guest and we've had a wonderful time. I hadn't seen one another in several years. Oh, and dear, uh, yes. It's about time that we got together <laughs> again. Massimo, I wanted to sit you in front of the camera here in order to ask you, what is the state of the skeptical uh, movement, let's say, mm. in Italy. I, I know the state of it here, I know it in China, I know it in Australia, but I don't know much about it in Italy. What is the current status? Well, Italy has the, it's called CICAP, which means the, in Italian, the Italian Committee for Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal. And it's an organization that now is about 20 years old, mm -hmm. and it was started um, thanks to Piero Angelo and yourself, who you came to Italy and helped us start it, and uh, of course uh, all the people at PSYCAP, uh, Paul Kurtz, and everybody helped us to, to get the thing started. And then uh, along the years it grew, uh, we have uh, a magazine, we have uh, uh, memberships, and uh, we organize uh, national conferences, and we are, what we are most proud of is the fact is it's investigating things. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, in these 20 years investigated a few hundreds of, of cases of Many, many, many kinds, from the blood of San Januarius to uh, magnetic hills to psychics of any kind, and we receive dozens of letters from people claiming to have psychic powers, and of course they are all mostly uh, honest people who really believe they yes, do, oh yes. but they have no clue on how to test these things. Self-deluded folks, and uh, you've got to treat them with a lot of respect, Absolutely. though, and uh, I'm sure you see that. Uh, we certainly have seen it here because they are honestly self-deluded. They don't know how to test their own claims. Now, as you know, Massimo, and uh, most of our viewers will know, the James Randi Educational Foundation has a million dollar yeah. challenge that we put out there. And we have uh, spoken to people uh, in the Italian group, of course, and we've informed them, as we do with all skeptical groups all around the world, that if uh, claimants, people who say they've got some sort of supernatural power or believe that they have, um, are welcome to be tested by local groups uh, and foreign groups, such as yeah, Chicago, for example. Did, yes. And uh, they've done many tests, as the, the German group, uh, GWUP, yeah. has done for us uh, in Germany. And uh, that serves as the preliminary test. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if they don't pass the preliminary test for the Million Dollar Challenge, they have to wait 12 months until they reapply if they want to. And very seldom do we ever get anybody reapplying right. because uh, they, they then give excuses like, uh, well, I guess this is the kind of thing that can't really be tested. Oh, yes, it can, of course, uh, or we wouldn't get involved in that. But uh, that's usually the last we see of them. And uh, Chicap is uh, of that exact same nature. I, I should also mention that uh, many of our viewers won't know who Piero Angelo is. Oh, yeah. And uh, but in Italy, <laughs> it's incredible. You walk down the street with a man, and it's like God is walking down the street beside you. Uh, he's very, very well yeah. known. He's as well known as someone like Walter Cronkite, yeah. for example, but, here in this country uh, would be known. And uh, though he's in much better state <laughs> <laughs> because he's very much alive, uh, Piero is a, is a wonderful gentleman, as as we know, and he is very much the moving spirit hmm. behind the uh, skeptical movement uh, in Italy and has had a great deal of influence here too. You do get a lot of uh, people making claims though. Yeah, lots of people <coughs> and uh, and also from the media we get many requests in, to do investigation, to do mm -hmm. tests on, on oh, television too. Oh, that's, you see, you, you're doing better in that respect mm. than we are doing in this country however. Now only recently we had this ADE 561 yeah. or whatever it was dowsing rods. Yes. We found that in the UK they've done something about it, but it's very difficult for yes. us here in the United States. And uh, it seems that Chicap is doing better than we are doing. I don't know what it is. We have the support of many famous scientists, Nobel Prize winners, and mm -hmm. of course journalists, and, um, and even some celebrity, as you would say. Uh, but we are constantly asked to be either on radio, on television, or interviewed for newspapers. Mm. You know, I, I can analyze for you the for the million dollar challenge. Now yeah. oh, <laughs> we get the craziest people. I mean, <laughs> not the craziest people. I'm sorry. No, no. I, I shouldn't say that. We get the craziest claims made Crazy. by otherwise quite sane people. Let's put it that way. But the majority, a good eighty five percent of the claims that we get here, are dowsing. 
this business mm. of a fork yeah, stick yeah. in your hands, bobbing up and down. And they, they, they can find oil and gold and missing children, missing coon dogs even. They've got a specific oh. dowsing rod that's for sale just for coon dogs. Right. If you lose your coon dog, friends, write to us and we'll send you this for $400 or whatever they charge for it. And that's supposed to find your coon dog. Okay. Yeah, sure. But the dowsing claim is by far the most common one. And this is because, what? there's a good reason yeah. for that, because... Dowsers are largely self-deluded. They're not fakes. No, no. They're not pretending they have yeah. this power. Yeah. The idiomotor reaction, and you can look that up on the JREF website, by the way. Do take a look at it because it explains what the, the idiomotor reaction is. It has nothing to do with idiots. No. <laughs> but the idiomotor reaction is a very strong reaction. Until you have experienced that, you won't realize just how strong it is. What a psychological influence it is. Now, you're a psychologist by trade, profession, that is, uh, <laughs> although you're, you're not practicing no, no. As, a, as a psychologist. So you understand fully yeah. well what the idiomotor reaction is. And I want people out there who hear this broadcast, to view this video, I should say, to look up the idiomotor reaction in your dictionary and in psychology textbooks and look it up on the James Randi Educational Foundation website as well, because we have a definition right there that uh, explains it pretty well, and it's mentioned many times in the Annals of Swift, our webpage. Uh, now, the idiomotor reaction is so subtle. It's very convincing. People are taken in by it, and that's why there are so many people out there who honestly believe yeah. they are self-deluded, but they honestly believe that they can do this business with the stick or the pendulum or the coat hanger wires or whatever they say they can use to determine the sex of an unborn child, for example, uh, and, and find gold and oil and all the rest of the thing. And missing children, they, they say they can do this sort of thing. They believe they can, and they honestly do believe, so they're self-deluded. Uh, but that's, as I say, about 80 to 85% of the claims that we get over the years, and we've had thousands of claims, of course. But um, second to that is healing mm. or diagnostics. Yeah. Okay. They say that they can look at a person or they can and borrow a ring from the person or something and get vibrations. They can tell what diseases that they're, they're subject to. And, of course, that's, that's full of all kinds of interpretations, you know. Uh, you have a heart problem here. No, I never had a heart problem. Oh, no, I mean a heart problem's coming up. <laughs> so they, they, they adjust their, their, their prophecies, you see, and their diagnosis uh, to these things. And, uh, and then people say they can actually heal by concentrating yeah. on you or sending you the right kind of letter, having you hold an amulet or wear something around your neck. And in many cases, uh, these people are also self-deluded. Hmm. But what are the major claims that you get in, in Italy? Well, these two uh, yes. as well, but also anything from haunted houses, poltergeist. Ah. Oh, yes. Um, people claiming strange, for example, things that you would, wouldn't even imagine. <laughs> it was a lady... Uh, that claims she had the power to mummify eggs. Oh, yes, I remember, you remember this. Yes, yes. How would you imagine to First of all, why would you want why? to mummify what, eggs? What's this Unless power? you're an Egyptian and you're very <laughs> religious, I don't know. And you want to bring but, eggs with you in exactly, the afterlife. Exactly, exactly. Yes. But still, you know, she, she came with these dried up eggs mm -hmm. open in a dish, and she said, you know, I have this energy coming out from the ends, and this is what happened, so I want you to study me. And, and what we could do was, was a, a double blind test. Of course. Uh, we, we just take 10 dishes with 10 eggs, and then one they should give to the lady, and she treats it like she does mm -hmm. at her home. And the other nine are just samples, you know, control see. samples that you yes, give, yes, and you yes. place them in two different rooms because, of course, she said, you know, oh, the yes. treated ones, the energy flows and changes all the others. So two different rooms with the same conditions, same temperatures, and mm -hmm. humidity, mm -hmm. and so on. And in the end, you come, you call a, an independent judge, somebody who doesn't know anything about this, to, yes. to say if they see any difference between what the, one of these is treated and the others are not. So tell us if you see any difference. And of course, in the end, all of the eggs are the same. They are all dried up. Because this is what happens if you break an egg and if you leave it in yeah. a dish, yeah, in, exactly. in a room which is not too hot or too humid. Of course, yes. So it's just a question of dehydration. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. But still, when you do this experiment, which is very easy in the end to understand. Also. And very demonstrative. It does prove the point one way or the I other. Think, well, you, you would think so, but the, this lady, for example, and most of the people that come to us as well as those that come to you, I'm, I'm sure, 
they rationalized this and, uh, and, and in this case she said, well, no, this proves that everybody has this power. <laughs> Of course, they're of course. great at rationalizing. I say that, <laughs> they, and, be, and because they they usually are forced to rationalize, they try to show it to somebody else, and they give them the same reasons, and they say, "Ah, but we have an answer for that." Mm, yeah. Even if before you ask them, you know, to write down exactly if the conditions mm -hmm. are perfect, if there is something wrong, you don't do the test because otherwise it's an excuse. How true. Massimo, I want to thank you very much oh, for your really? time. It's, it's been a pleasure talking to you again. And uh, we'll, I'll be over in Italy not too long from now, yes, as a matter yes, of fact, yes, and yes. Uh, looking forward to that. Yes, keep, and keep, uh, you will have the brass band to meet me at the airport, oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Massimo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. We thank you for watching this latest episode of James Randi Speaks. For more of James Randi and the Educational Foundation, make sure you visit randy.org.